and liftoff. Décollage, liftoff from a tropical rainforest to the edge of time itself. James Webb begins a voyage back to the birth of the universe. Hello, we are back now in Machon uh, Gavitson. We are talking now to a kind of war again, not to see you again. Today we are going to talk uh, about the telescope James Webb and its findings. What can you tell us about the telescope when it was launched, by whom, and when it got switched on, all the... the first of all, hello. hello. It's nice to be here again. The Welcome. James Webb Space Telescope is a unique space telescope which was launched in December 2021 after almost 25 years of building and planning and designing and testing and it took more than a month to arrive at its destination a point called L2 which is one of the five points five Lagrange points where the uh, gravity of earth and the sun are balanced so it doesn't take a lot of energy to stay around this point and during this period they started uh, deploying the instruments of the telescope, the large mirror which was folded for launch, the secondary mirror and all the other optics and uh, heat shield. And when, upon arriving on, at L2, they started calibrating the instruments and around June they started actually taking photos of the universe, first for calibration and then for scientific purposes. And the first photos which NASA recently introduced and exposed to the public are already processed photos in which you can see some elements of the universe which initially demonstrate the tremendous capabilities of this telescope. Wow. And how far is our galaxy from the findings approximately? The, in the first five uh, pictures that NASA released you can see a whole variety of uh, objects. Uh, one of them, for example, the planet WASP-96b is just over a thousand light years away from us, which is very far, but it's one of the nearest objects mm -hmm. that uh, James Webb uh, observed. In the deep field image that you can see, it's really great optical uh, abilities you can see galaxies as old as 13 billion light years, which means they are 13 billion light years away from us. So it's really a tremendous capability. Hubble, for example, also took almost the same identical image, but with a far lesser resolution. So James Webb can enable us to see better and in higher, in greater details, the same objects which are farther away. If there is a galaxy with a planet with life on it, like ours, looking from the, the, the galaxy far, far away, it can also uh, look at us? Well, if they have the technology, they could see us. But if they are looking at us from 13 billion years away, it would take them a few more billion years to see us because we're too young to be seen at <laughs> this distance. The, our uh, solar system was formed about four and a half billion years ago. So anybody outside this range mm -hmm. of 4.5 billion light years won't be able to see us for a while. So we can live peacefully, uh, not worry, enjoying uh, life and... This is a pretty big radius as it is. So. I uh, see. It would be fascinating to find if there are any other life forms in the universe. I'm not sure James Webb can do it, but it can give us good hints because, for example, the observation on this, the planet I mentioned, the WASP-96b, the James Webb telescope uh, could take spectroscopic measures of the composition of its atmosphere. And certain chemical compounds have a specific spectroscopic signature so you, that you can identify them and one of the things that James Webb discovered was that this atmosphere is rich in water 
water mm. vapor because it's a very hot planet. But if it would be able to discover more planets with chemical signature <coughs> that may indicate uh, life or, pres or potential conditions for presence of life as we know it, it might be a good hint for us where to look for life itself. And the James Webb can take also video capture or only photos? No, it's just taking stills, but you can edit them into videos if you take enough still video, still photos. Mm. And how long does, after you take the pictures, the pictures arrive back to, to, Earth. to Earth? The telescope is uh, about one and a half million kilometers from Earth. So it takes a few minutes to get uh, the dilate sense back into Earth, but it takes a lot longer to process and study the images. But you can get them almost immediately. You get a picture file, what a kind of data you receive from the... You, you receive just numbers, lists of numbers, but the computers immediately translate them back into a visual uh, image. And the initial visual image is very uh, bleak. You, you just see a single color because it's a, a red and infrared mm -hmm. telescope. You don't see a, the very colorful picture that NASA presented. Those are all the processed and colored to be more easier to digest for people. Now let's go to the telescope itself. itself. Mm -hmm. It's, it's instead of Hubble, that Hubble now not working or still working and... No, uh, Hubble Space Telescope was initially launched in 1990 and it's still operating after more than 30 years. A bit crippled but still working. And James Webb is not directly replacing him because it works in slightly different wavelength of light. Mm -hmm. uh, Hubble was uh, observing mostly visible light and some UV. James Webb is just in the end of the spectrum of the visible light, the red colors, and the infrared, which uh, Hubble didn't use. So, in a way, they are complementing each other. But in contrary to the Hubble Space Telescope, which had four service missions during the years, because it's only 550 kilometers from Earth, mm -hmm. The James Webb Telescope, as I said, is 1.5 million kilometers from Earth, so nobody's going to be able to service it if there are any problems. It's designed to work about five years. Scientists hope it would work 10 and maybe even longer. I see. And how much it costs to build the uh, James Webb? How much do you have? <laughs> I can it easily rob a bank, but I don't think it will be enough. Yeah, it won't be enough. It was about, as I said, it took uh, about 25 years of planning, designing, building, testing, and the cumulative price is over $11 billion. Mm. Most of it was funded by NASA with some partnership by the European Space Agency and the Canadian Space Agency. A lot of fun, I yeah. would say. It is an expensive machine. Hopefully, it will return some of the investment in <laughs> scientific uh, results. Yeah, and hopefully, we'll me find living planets with the uh, capability of four people. That won't be the first goal, because even if you find planets suitable for life, they would be way too far for us to travel there. Far, far away. Yeah, even if you consider the nearest solar system, which is only four light years away, in the current technology we have, it will take, take us about 60, 70,000 years to get there. So it's not a practical journey. It will even take us at least uh, eight years to communicate with any life form that may be there. We can help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what we do. Okay, uh, nice to be here. Thanks for the information and knowledge. And until next time, we'll be for another interesting phenomena. Thank you very much. <laughs>